So for analysis, let's go to the Ugandan capital Kampala with Bart Kakoza, Chief Executive Officer, Media Plus. Good evening, uh, Bart. Good evening, Shaka. How are you? I'm fine. I'm terrific like you are. I'm glad that you are terrific. In fact, in my particular case, I have to say I am hugely terrific. <laughs> That's great. Now, talk to me, uh, but I know that uh, you were very, very close to Jean-Pierre Bemba. Um, what was your immediate reaction when uh, you learned about his sentencing to 18 years? When you talk about, say, that I was close, I wasn't very close, like you say. I was a reporter during the, the, the war, the, 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 the turmoil in, in Congo. So I, I, I spent most of my time reporting his, uh, on, in, on his side of uh, the rebellion. So I knew him as a man who, was, um, who had been actually, well, popped up with, with support from Uganda. And, and the fact that Uganda had... Um, interest in trying to fight the rebels who are in, in Congo. They brought in soldiers from Uganda to who, who actually fought alongside with him. But considering that the, the soldiers from Uganda army were, were general, generally disciplined, so I didn't see any form of indiscipline in the recruits that had been recruited during the, the, the rebellion. So I was actually surprised at the time I heard that Bemba had been, you know, indicted on the grounds of uh, causing uh, mayhem in, in Central Africa Republic. I was really utterly surprised that, that such a thing could happen, that he could have sent people in Central Africa Republic to cause mayhem. Now, you say, of course, that uh, he did have support uh, from Uganda, and uh, there were certain Ugandan uh, soldiers under his command. Do you have a sense as to whether some of those soldiers were also involved in what happened in the Central African Republic? At the time, in 2000, early 2000, the, the, the Ugandan troops were not under the command of Jean-Pierre Bemba. They were under the command of the Ugandan commanders. But for, the, for them, if you are an enemy of my, of my enemy, then you are my friend. So that was the arrangement. But I, they never crossed, Ugandan soldiers never crossed into Central Africa Republic with Jean-Pierre Bemba. And I believe that the, the, the atrocities that, that, that are being alluded to are those that probably could have happened when the Ugandan troops had pulled out of the center of Congo. It is very interesting that uh, we talk about um, Jean-Pierre Bemba being charged for instances, incidences that occurred in uh, the Central African Republic. We don't really talk about uh, his involvement in the Congolese civil war, for example. Are you surprised by that? I am actually surprised because uh, the circumstances under which Bemba is alleged to have gone into Central Africa Republic are not very, a very kind of smoky. And uh, I, I would have thought that they would have kind of dwelt on or delved into his, his, his activities in, the, in, in Congo. What kind of person, what kind of guy was Jean-Pierre Bemba? Because I know back in 1999, but... Uh, I met you at the Kampala Sheraton, and I remember that uh, while we were exchanging some social amenities, uh, you were in fact uh, offering to help introduce me to Jean-Pierre Bemba so that we could go to his area of operation. Do you remember that? Yes, I remember that very well. You see, one, one of the things that, we, that still remains a fact is that the Ugandan UPDF army is, is, a, is undoubtedly a, a generally very disciplined army. And the fact that they were fighting along with him, not under his command, but you know, because he, he, they were in his area of control, he really had to have a lot of discipline. So there was no kind of indiscipline that I ever saw in, in, in being, you know, done by, by Bemba and his troops. And his troops actually had to very, very vehemently listen to 
the Ugandan troops who were in Congo at that time. So it is surprising that after the Ugandan troops had pulled out, maybe that maybe Bemba became indisciplined. But I would I find it also far fetched that with the discipline that had been instilled in him and the fact that he moved into Congo and didn't cause a lot, we moved into government, accepted to take up the position that he had taken. I, I find I find it strange that they delved into the matters of him having gone into Central African Republic. I know he was a friend of the president at that time, but I never re remembered him. I never remember him crossing from Badolite to the Central African Republic, taking soldiers there. He was a friend, of course, of President uh, Anje Patasi. Is that correct? Yes, he was very close, very close to him. And the fact that his headquarters was and he, when he was fighting the rebels, when he was fighting Kabila then, his headquarter, he was headquartered in a place called uh, Risala and Badolite. Badolite is close to the, to the Central African Republic border. So he, well, I used to see him crossing over as a friend. And of course, if you are fighting, whoever he wants to give you arms or maybe help, you would actually go. And, and because, and of course, if, if there was any chaos, if there was any like of being overpowered by the, 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 the government then, I think the exit point would have been the Central African Republic, so he had to be friends with, with Patas. Now, but uh, earlier you said that uh, the UPDF, the Ugandan Army, is very disciplined. Um, if that is true, then how do you, yes, how do you uh, reconcile the fact that uh, Uganda is expected to be paying about 10 billion US dollars to the DRC for the havoc that the Ugandan army caused in the eastern part of the Congo. We're talking about Sangani and those surrounding areas. I think, I think when you talk about the havoc that was caused by, by the UPDF, it is not correct, because I don't think UPDF caused havoc. There was no havoc that was caused by UPDF. There were two armies which were there, the Rwandese army and the Ugandan army. And of course, they had no, they didn't agree on some certain points and they fought. They had some kind of misunderstandings after fighting, they left. But in as far as saying that Ugandan troops, that Uganda army had the policy of going to Congo to loot them, I don't think so. But at the same time, I don't, I don't deny that there could have been some, some problem, maybe soldiers, some, some of the army who could probably have been disciplined. If you look at other armies in the world, you look at America, for example, when they went to Iraq, they tortured people. Some, but it was not it the policy of the American government to torture some civilians of people. So if you say that, I, I don't think it was, it was UPDF. UPDF is still... But isn't, still it true for, it is, in, um, isn't it true that uh, the International Court of Jurists uh, uh, found the Ugandan, the Ugandan army or the Ugandan government guilty and Uganda, in fact, owes the DRC 10 U.S. billion dollars? Yes, that one I'm very, I'm very sure about. But what would have, what would, you see, you, you want to tell me that, that Uganda shouldn't have gone into Congo? There are reasons why Uganda went to Congo. And they went there because they were rebels. And when you are fighting, probably if you are fighting rebels, there are people probably get injured, people die. During the war, it's not a picnic. So if they died, but it wasn't a deliberate, I don't think it was a deliberate government policy to go to Congo and cause mayhem. I don't think it was there. And I myself, as a reporter, I never saw the so-called said mayhem that they, they caused in, this, in Central Africa, in, in DRC. So in this particular case uh, of Jean-Pierre Bemba, do you think that uh, the ICC is justified in finding him guilty uh, for committing crimes, you know, uh, for committing crimes uh, against humanity or for committing war crimes um, in a neighboring Central African Republic. Is he the man that should be taking ultimate responsibility? Or should it be a field commander on the ground or someone that was sponsoring him from a third party country? Well, he, well, when you, when you are the head of, 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 of the, an organization you take responsibility. But at the same time, if ICC, I think, made a mistake, they should have 
done a lot of due diligence to come on the ground and find out exactly, because I don't think Bemba could have gotten a, a gun and shot anybody himself. There must have been his commanders on the ground. So I think the, the ICC faltered so much in not going on the ground to find out exactly what, what, who those leaders were. In, 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 in Rwanda, for example, they, they, they hunted down whoever was in charge. They didn't say, let's, let's let Abiyarimana take responsibility because he was the leader and others should be left to go scotch free. But the, the ICC was wrong. They should have gone and gotten those specific individuals who they claim caused the chaos in, in Central African Republic. Well, on that note, uh, thank you very, very much, uh, Bart Kakosa, for your analysis.